Welcome to the QE2. She's the most famous ocean liner in the world. So much history and romance. Back in the day, she was the place to be seen. There was David Bowie, there was Nelson Mandela. Where would that happen in life? Now she has a new home in Dubai. QE2 is older than Dubai itself. And a new life as a luxury hotel. It's scary every day. You don't know what's coming around the corner. Forward? No, 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 back. 700 oysters. If this doesn't get people going, then nothing will. Honestly, that was wow. Chip ahoy. She's a little bit of Britain with a lot of royal heritage. This is the room where I met Her Majesty. It does sort of smack you around the head and say, you're in part of Britain. Roast dinner that tastes like home. Oh. Crumbles, bread and butter pudding, anything that can go with custard. I think it's wonderful it's now in Dubai. It looks enormous. <laughs> Fighting her corner in the world's toughest hotel market. Every second in Dubai, there's something new opening up. Wow. We have to make sure that she makes money. But with a multi-million pound refurb underway. Pressure's certainly on. Time is against us. Uh, these lights, this means a lot to a lot of people. How many days we've got? One more day. That's a lot of pressure, yeah. It's been a mammoth restoration job. <laughs> and a new team at the helm. Get this right! Guys, come on! Get things moving! Someone's head's gonna roll. Oh, Lord. Probably my head's gonna roll. Get ready for the madness that's about to happen. Will it be sink or swim for the QE2? The world's most luxurious floating hotel. The QE2 was launched as a floating hotel in Dubai less than two years ago. And she's now a permanent fixture at the city's port. Bigger than Titanic, she's six double-decker buses tall, as long as three football pitches, and she sailed over six million miles before she was retired. Famous for serving up first-class travel, passengers on board were waited on hand and foot dining in some of the fanciest restaurants afloat. She was like the Savoy of the high seas. Good morning, welcome aboard the QE2. She's now a hotel, permanently moored in one of the most glamorous cities on Earth, Dubai. And her 283 international staff are trying to recreate that special QE2 experience for their guests. Across seven decks and three miles of corridor, thousands of guests' bags are carried. More than 200 beds are changed. You need to make it fast. Cocktails are mixed. High teas are served. Bread is baked. These ovens would have done bread for Elton, David Bowie, the Beatles, and of course, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. With three onboard restaurants to oversee, executive chef Dino is always under pressure. Fantastic. Guest expectation in this country, you put them off, they don't come back. They do their talking with their feet. That's how it works. Get someone cleaning here, please. Total in the kitchen at the moment, I've got 62 chefs. It's never enough. And some last minute lunch bookings for the main restaurant are adding to the stress. Mohammed. Okay, how many for lunch? 450. 450? 500 now. It's a push. How's the sushi? Six and a half to seven thousand pieces being created, one man, by hand, to be served and consumed today. Dino's team must prepare 200 different dishes for the international buffet being served today. People that are dining here have no comprehension and no idea what work goes behind the scenes to produce lunch. Stress plays second fiddle after adrenaline. Guys, are we ready? It's manic, it's mayhem. The guys are frantically running to get this ready and done. They need to. Today's diners are forming a hungry queue. I want more cheese, more All cheese. Right. I need three, four times this quantity of right. We'll be there, we'll be ready. This is the QE2. This is a job that any chef would never turn down. Good morning. Welcome to the QE2. Good morning, sir. In reception, they're getting ready for a busy day. Uh, just let me take you quickly to the VIPs who are coming uh, late afternoon today. They are repeating to us, book for Ocean Deluxe Room. Make sure every passenger who comes to the doorstep has been greeted, been welcomed with a smile. But some guests have checked in early. Okay, Adam, you need to make it first. 
I'll do the bed, you start the bathroom. If the guest is waiting in the lobby, that's the first priority we need to give. I do like it, because uh, when it's busy, as you can see, I don't need to go to the gym, so I'm saving also. <laughs> I'm working and saving at the same time. Management. Every bedroom must be inspected before it can be released to a guest. Dusting is being done. Make sure the mirror is OK. No dust. The lights are very kink. Phone is functional, perfect. Cleanliness is one of the highest expectations that the guest has by coming to the hotel. So if you're not perfectionist, if you do not have a great attention for details, you cannot really succeed in this business. With more than 100 five-star hotels and over 100,000 hotel rooms, competition in the Dubai hotel market is fierce. Every day, every second in Dubai, there's something new opening up. And if you don't keep your game at the best it is, you will fall down very quickly and you will fall behind the market very quickly. But the ship has a problem trying to keep up with the market. She's not finished. When she was first bought by the Dubai government for $100 million, she was a tired old ship heading for the scrapyard. And the final cost of refurbishing her into a fully finished hotel will be tens of millions of pounds. And the man who has all the pressure of making this grand venture work is CEO Hamza Mustafa. That's good. Good job, chef. He had his challenges right from the very beginning. I was given the ship as is. I had no blueprints, no plans of the ship. This is 112 without changing any of the room sizes. To get the original blueprints, I went back to a library in Scotland that had the original blueprints, and I called up the librarian, and she actually uh, sent me the blueprints by mail. Historical blueprints are one thing. Coming up with a plan to make the ship work as a hotel is another. Because she's so big and because there are zones that are secluded from the others, we've been able to open sections of her and keep other sections closed off. So we've launched only 40% of the project. To make QE2 viable, they must open more rooms, especially those commanding a superior price. And it's designer Chris who must make it happen. The headboard will be here, the bed will be set here. You're going to have the long desk and TV, and uh, the toilet is right in the back there. So as a, as a, as a room, it's well orientated, but we had to work on it. When fully booked and crewed, the ship could sleep nearly 3,000. They are smaller rooms. We've got the Q2, we cannot make it bigger, we cannot produce another one, but we have to work with it. We revised, Steve, all the drawings for the bookshelving. Yes, correct. We've got yes. a little bench here. Yep. So it kind of becomes a little sort of breakout uh, library, a chill-out area. You know, we have to be cost-effective, we have to be a business at the end of the day. We have to perform. The challenge is always there. But Chris's biggest challenge is time. In just a few days, VIP guests are supposed to check into several unfinished rooms. If what they've booked isn't ready, it will be a major setback. Coming up... You will have pipers coming out of your ears. Scotland's national dish baffles the kitchen. First time you say to them, haggis, neeps and teddies, they look at me like, huh? Oh. And could a glamorous new arrival... A normal crossing would cost you in the region of about 45,000. ..put the QE2's refurbishment in the shade? It's not the right green. At 52 years of age, Hotel QE2 is one of the oldest landmarks in Dubai and she's become a tourist attraction. Welcome to the QE2 here in Dubai. And one of two original crew members is head of tours, Peter. I said to my mum at one stage, I will work on the ship, which don't be ridiculous. We're just going to head off down here now to the uh, other end of the museum. And when I do my tours, I actually say I'm showing you around my home because, frankly, it feels like home. 
The QE2 had an incredible history in her sailing career, clocking up 812 crossings of the Atlantic Ocean. We went around the world 25 times. Glamorous guests include Hollywood royalty, like Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton, and rock stars David Bowie and Ringo Starr. As a passenger, I met Her Majesty the Queen on the Royal Voyage. That was amazing because I happened to share her birthday. Nelson Mandela sailed with us from Cape Town to Durban. That was another extraordinary four days to meet him. Where would you meet these people? 26 years ago, I was standing here in my embarkation uniform, welcoming passengers on board. My colleague would be standing there, and here there would be music, perhaps a pianist or a string quartet playing as passengers embarked the QE2. They'd say to us, we are home now. That's how they thought, and that's the thing that's so special about the QE2. It was home to so many people. I had people on my tour the other month who hadn't been on board since, I think, 1998. They came in the midship's lobby and they actually cried. That's how much this ship meant to so many people. So much so, the ship has numerous online fan sites. Now nostalgic former passengers are returning as VIP guests. A bad review would be bad for business. Checking in is former guest Andrew. Good afternoon. Great to be how back. Are you today? Very good. Welcome back. But will the hotel live up to his cherished memories of the ship? 19 years ago, I travelled on the QE2 from Southampton to New York, first time ever on a cruise. And it was this ship that uh, you know, got me into the, the love of travelling on, on cruise ships. There we go. To see the red funnel is just wonderful. The minute you see the red funnel, you know you're arriving on the QE2. And I'll never forget going into Southampton, and uh, it would always be the first person to see the red funnel buys the drinks. Now we are in the midship lobby. You know this place very well. In the many hammer rooms. Of course, you've got the, the Clyde, where the ship was uh, built, to the many crossings, you know, across into New York. Of course, when I travelled on the ship, you know, Concorde was flying. The QE2 was always one of those things. It was, it was on par with Concorde. It was on par with the Orient Express. The room is on our right side, so on the CBU side. So to open the door, we just need to scan the key and open the door, please. Welcome home. Great. Wow, well, thank you please, very much. Key. My pleasure. Thank you. Wow. They've kept the style and the colours and the room is just you know, very reminiscent to uh, you know, how it was when I travelled on the ship. You know, it just brings back goosebumps. Andrew's happy with his room, but other cabins are far from finished. Now we've got pressure to start having all the rooms portfolio released and uh, we've got uh, a lot to do. And that's going to be a challenge with guests being in, uh, in house and, uh, and we're going to need to do sections by sections. While the refurb continues apace, designer Chris is double-checking his hand-picked furnishings for the VIP's rooms. These are the lamps for the rooms. It reminds me of the old table lamps we used to have at Alton in Victorian times, so that green element is, is very important. The thing is, it's not the right green. The wrong shade of green could ruin a room, apparently. We wanted a British racing green. We're very much driven by attention to detail. It's a must. It's a must. Basically, we went back to the factory. We gave them a new reference. We used the, uh, I think it was either Bentley or Aston Martin's reference for the for the darker oh. British racing green. Very happy with this, Nick. Great. Really good. Yes. I would have loved to have a nice British flag to it, <laughs> uh, sort of Union Jack somewhere. It would have been a nice touch, but we'll see. Modernising the vessel with a refurbishment is vital to drawing in more guests, but so is retaining her authenticity. An interesting part. The original hasn't been changed. We left it. It just looked so cool, so we didn't have to change it. We actually have the original china, the original cockery, the original plates, because it actually has the original stamp and the logo of the QE2. So this is an original memorabilia piece. For CEO Hamza, the refurbishment is a constant battle between old and new. 
this area is what the ship was from 1969. This veneer, even today with all of our modern materials, we were not able to find the same grade and the same finishing that they did back in, in the late 60s. This is a huge restoration job. And even areas where you see imperfections, a part of me wants to go and fix it, but if we did that, you're actually changing history. But hidden from the public is a room where the old and new live happily side by side. This is the original safety control room of the ship. Now, these are all pneumatic controls which were built in the 60s. Today, it's just done by this computer. This computer manages the entire safety system, so it's the central core of the ship. The QE2 is analog and we live in a digital world. So I've had to change all the infrastructure of the ship to modernize her. And I love coming down here because this is really the backbone of the ship. Above deck, meanwhile, the refurbishments continue. And the hotel's first VIP guests will arrive soon. The luxurious Queen Mary II is docking in Dubai for a few days, and 20 of her passengers will guest in some of QE2's refurbished rooms. Longer, taller, and twice as heavy, she cost almost half a billion pounds to build, and is one of the largest ocean liners ever. Head of tours Peter, who's never set foot on another cruise ship, wants to check out the competition. Chris. He's being shown round by old friend and former QE2 crewman, Chris. You want to come on board? Right, let's come go. On. Come yeah, and see the other sister. Well, exactly. <laughs> so this is the Grand Lobby. Oh, yeah. So very much like Deck 2 on QE2. This is our interpretation of that. Yeah. They've used some of the accents from QE2, bringing them across. Yeah. But obviously you wouldn't know because you've only ever been on QE2. Uh -huh. It's space, isn't it, as well? I mean, it's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah it's all about the comfort, you know. it's about the space. We started it, of course. You did start it, yes. you did. In recent years, Queen Mary II's had a £90 million refurbishment to make her even more sumptuous. They're a helipad, of course, there. The main suites, you know, the, the posh suites, do. Yeah. How much are you looking at for, say, a transatlantic? Something like that. Um, a, a normal crossing would cost you in the region of about 45000 Let's hope the VIP guests are bowled over when they step on board her sister ship and their refurbished rooms are ready in time. And the hotel has even more to worry about. As well as the rooms and all the usual hotel comings and goings, they've taken a booking for a big event. Good morning, all. So shall we start with the agenda, please? And at the head of department's meeting, General Manager Yanal wants an update. Going forward, right, OK, Burns Night is, is coming up very shortly. Scott's uh, um, happy with the plan so far. Burns Night is the annual celebration of Scottish poet Robert Burns and one of the biggest nights in the Scottish calendar. From a social media perspective, will they have all the bagpipers? Maybe we can get them to come down to the You'll Quayside have pipers level. coming out of your ears. Then the classic, classic haggis, uh, neeps and taddies. Mm -hmm. um, homemade. Burns Night, for us, very challenging to get it right. Remember the heritage and the origins of the QE2, built on the Clyde in Scotland. When she was launched by Queen Elizabeth in 1967... I named this ship Queen Elizabeth II. A massive Scottish crowd cheered her departure, and she's held a special place in Scottish hearts ever since. It's like bringing it home. Now Dino's kitchen has its own construction to complete, the haggis. Haggis in the UAE is a difficult product to source, so therefore it's an in-house production from start to finish. But to the 18 different nationalities in the ship's kitchen, haggis is a touch exotic. The first time you say to them, haggis, neeps and taddies, they look at me dumbfounded like, huh? And they think I'm talking gibberish. It's some kind of dal. No, it's lamb pluck. I have to be very careful when I say pluck. Pluck is the Scottish term for heart's liver and lung. It's mashed swede, it's mashed potatoes. 
very challenging to get it right. Even more challenging if no one knows how to make it. So I'm originally from South Africa. I've got a little bit of Scottish heritage. Been to Scotland. I haven't had the privilege yet to do a lot of Scottish dishes. A recipe, however, has been found online. It's a lot of stress that goes on to us for something that's not our average day cooking. Chef Rama is entrusted with mixing the haggis, traditionally prepared inside a sheep's stomach. Uh, so to have a haggis, so it's the main thing we need a lamb stomach we have. The haggis will be the centerpiece of the Burns Night Dinner, which is due to be held in the Queen's Room. When it was first built, its 60s state-of-the-art design was sleek and chic. Even the Queen came to see it. But that was then. And this is now. So far, more than three million man-hours have been spent refurbishing QE2. Well, let's take these shoes off. <laughs> and it's busy designer Chris who's under the cosh again to get this iconic room ready. I want to check the colours. Oh, I just God. want to check. Yeah, this is the original. We kept right. Yeah, it's good. It's a tiny little bit darker. And it has this uh, sort of beautiful ceiling. This is original from the 60s. It's one of those uh, rooms that uh, it's uh, unique to the QE2. It's a completely different experience from any building you have. The ship is completely different. That's why normally they fit out of a ship, goes into a dry dot, and they do it from top to bottom. We cannot open windows here, or it's not like a normal building. You get material from inside here. So we get it through the restaurants. At night, you have to do it from trolleys as much as you can because you can't have equipment or cranes to lift them. It's been challenging, but, you know, it's fun as well. But I'm not doing it physically, so... <laughs> Chris might laugh, but finishing the Queen's Room refurbishment is now a matter of urgency. They need to hand the room over for the Burns Night Dinner in just four days' time. So, Ban, can we move fast today? There's a sense of, um, you know, that we can achieve anything in Dubai. So when somebody says we can't do it um, in four days, they, they, they say, yes, we can. With Burns Night looming, they need a quick step in the Queen's room to finish on time. How many days we've got? One more day. Coming up. Shoes, shoes, shoes. VIP arrivals pile on the pressure. This is one of the best rooms we've got. Great. And they're dancing out of time to finish the Queen's room. We should be able to be fine at 6 o'clock. End over. I know it's tense. Things are getting a bit tough right now. The very British QE2 has been operating as a hotel in Dubai for almost two years now. Out front, everything is running smoothly for the guests. But behind the scenes, she's only 40% complete. The ship is undergoing a multi-million dollar refurbishment and deadlines are looming everywhere. Bro, I need to vacuum the curtains. Deadline one, the far from finished Queen's room. See, there's dust in here, all over the place. It's due to host a Burns Night dinner for 200 guests tomorrow night. Hi, Saban. How are you? Time's running out. It's not coming together straight now here. Why is that? But for designer Chris and project manager Saban... Those finishings... Um, yeah, that's... Willie, get rid of this. Yeah, we're going to change it. The list of faults keeps getting longer and longer. Obviously, I have to set up all the tables, all the walls need to be finished. Uh, these lights, obviously the LED strip inside is a little bit loose. If you stand on it, it's a little bit sharp. This 50-something may need a facelift, but it's important she keeps her historical features too. These are the original curtains. And obviously the colour does not match entirely with the carpet, but they are here to sort of proof of the... of uh, 
of the past. At least the curtains don't need fixing. Saban's to-do list is now a mile long and they've only got a day to get it done. The event team has to come in. We have to hand over the area to them. So that's a lot of pressure, yeah. Getting the room ready for Burns Night isn't the only major challenge facing staff. Give me more salt. The kitchen was under pressure to create a haggis from scratch. Few had heard of it, let alone made one. Now it's judgment day. Hi there, how are you doing? Scottish event organiser Graham and host of the event Robert are on board to taste the kitchen's haggis. Is it good enough to serve on Burns Night? If you go to a dinner and the food's rubbish, then basically the whole dinner just descends into, into chaos. Obviously, haggis is quite a unique thing. Not everyone knows what it is, how to make it. Here it goes. Lovely. The texture's good as well. Yeah, very good. Portion size. If there can be more haggis, yeah, make potatoes and they need the same size or bigger. A hearty meal. The verdict on the haggis? Tasty, but tiny. The kitchen must up their game and their portion size for tomorrow's shindig. On the upper decks, they're finally adding furniture in the refurbished superior rooms. The end of this grand project is almost in sight. Now the pressure's really on housekeeping to have the rooms ready for their VIP guests. Hello. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome on board. Thank you very much. How are you today? Very well. And yourself? Yeah, we're fine. Thank you very much. And we've got a wonderful room ready for you. It's a captain's club room facing to sea view side. Good afternoon. Welcome on board. Thank you. Actually, we've got a very nice room, captain's club room with balcony. This Sounds is one wonderful. of the best rooms we've got. Great. It needs to be the best, and it needs to be ready. Thank you. Thanks. The design team's cutting it fine. Final touch in here is the swap out of the, uh, the shade. That pops on there. Perfect. Perfect. Wow. With the guests on their way from reception, Front of house Thomas still needs to do his final room check. If you just check on that side. Sure. You've got two spoons missing two from spoons the cup. Two spoons missing, all right. Yeah. Really pleased with it. Everything's immaculate. The rooms are finally ready. So this would be you guys. But are they good enough for guests used to the Queen Mary's luxury? All right, see you in a while. Let's we'll see what's see inside. And no noise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, look at that. That's the true love package, apparently. They did a lovely job. Wow. Oh, excellent. Oh, this is not what I expected at all. You are going to love this shower. Mm. The room is stunning. A lot of cruising suites are much, much smaller than this. This is very nice. It's like one of the biggest state rooms on the, on the Queen Mary. No, this is great fun. I love this. It's just it sparkles with modernity. There is a component here of stepping back in time. It works for us. The rooms have made a good impression. This is a lovely ship. Mm. Lovely ship. But there's no time to kick back because later the QE2's got to wow another must-impress guest, the captain of the Queen Mary 2. As one deadline is met, another takes its place. Now the pressure is on the refurb team in the Queen's room. I am literally left with less than two hours, and I have a lot to finish. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Welcome afternoon. aboard to the QE2. Guests for tonight's Burns Night dinner, like event organiser Graham, are already checking in for the party. Are you going to join the show for tonight? We're actually organising, <laughs> organizing. helping organise the oh, show. So. Well, I wish you good luck. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> but food and beverage director Grant must give the Queen's room the once over. Hey guys, how's it going? How are you? Yeah, good. If he's not happy, the whole night's in trouble. Of course, you know, we've got the guys coming in in about an hour from now. 
I'm a pain sometimes, but I think uh, eye for detail and those small touches make a big difference to an end product. Uh, we should be able to be fine at six o'clock. Hand over. I know it's tense. I was involved in other areas. I'm a little concerned about all the carpets, and I know you, you want to show me a few things. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. These panels, especially on the other side, are all popping up. Things like this as well, Chris. They yeah. will be filling in. And all on the other pillars as well, with the lights coming up. Yeah. Now, our big concern is obviously turning over the place. So things are getting a bit tough right now. But in the Queen's room instead... The head of tours, Peter, well, guiding one last group around before tonight's celebrations begin, working the Queen's room was far from taxing. Some stories can be told and, of course, some can't, but that's another issue. Part of my job as crew staff um, in those days, every evening, between actually 9.15 and 11.30 p.m., was to ballroom dance with the single ladies. It was a tough job, but we managed it very well, you know, very good exercise. Around the Queen's room floor would be tables, and ladies would sit, and if you danced with too many, they'd count, you've danced with her twice, you haven't danced with me once. I, you know, it was very much like this, so you had to sort of equal out. So many happy memories, many mm, other memories as well, shall we say. No, this is actually not good. Right now, the Queen's room's cracking under the strain. Yeah, those cracks there. Pushing the green Benji, we need to sort this out. The green Can you do it? Yeah, yeah. But we need to do it today. No, no. Yeah? Yeah. Well, there's always challenges. It's always fast, fast, fast. Do you need any extra manpower? If you don't feel confident. The guests have expectations coming onto the ship. We have to deliver. <laughs> Down on the quayside dock, it looks as though they're getting ready for another very important guest. Shoes, shoes, shoes. Be careful with your shoes, please. The red carpeted gangplank leads to one of the ship's hidden gems. I love this space. Let me show you. Oh, we have a beautiful car lift, which I think is, is great. Chris wants to make a head-turning exhibit for visitors, so he's planning on putting a vintage motor car in the old car lift, which guests will walk past as they board. You know, I wanted to really introduce a lovely uh, surprise for our guests. So as you enter, we want to get in a nice classic car. It has to be British, it has to be quintessential English. And this being Dubai, they've gone the whole hog with a 1977 Rolls-Royce Silver Wraith, a true British classic. Behind the wheel is Chris's boss, executive director, Adul. Being in Dubai, we always think about an upgrade, so uh, we thought a Rolls-Royce will be the right uh, name for this place. The, the gangway is very narrow, so we have to be careful. She's an expensive car, so we have to be really careful on how to take her in. That's a big challenge. The Rolls' battery isn't connected, so it can't be driven on board. But CEO Hamza is happy to give it a bit of Dubai welly. Perfect. We could get an electrical winch and uh, just winch up the car, but we want to do it the old-fashioned way. Hamza is always with us <laughs> at all times uh, when it comes for these type of challenges, or he loves to help. One, two, three, go! The Rolls Royce weighs over two tons. Go, okay. Come on, one, two, three. Okay, let's go, baby. Just with David, Just watch the front. Nice and easy. Somebody stop the car, huh? Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, team. Well done. <laughs> Huddle. Surprise! <laughs> this is Surprise. amazing! This Excellent. is amazing! Always an upgrade is wow, good in Dubai. Look at that! I believe Princess Margaret used one of these as yes, well. Yes, exactly, yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot, Adol. As always. Congratulations <laughs> to all you. of us. Brilliant! One challenge successfully passed. But up in the Queen's room... Burn Supper Club. Event starts from 7 o'clock onwards. Do we understand? Grant and executive chef Dino. Where's the rest of the team? Can someone call them, get them here quickly? We need to get this done fast. Are revving up for a testing Burns Night dinner. Itinerary for tonight is very tight. So we have to be ready with the haggis, the garnish, the silver tray, 
Five past eight started to be served. 162, we can do this in? Like seven, seven, seven minutes. Seven minutes? Yeah, seven okay, minutes. seven minutes. Main course at 8.25. Haggis, imperative to ensure that every single piece is the same size. It will be sent back if you're serving under or over. If we are late with this by five minutes, we are going to delay the whole evening and the whole ceremony. Clear? Clear? Yes. Okay. Coming up. Captain, I'll say welcome to QE2. QE2 must impress the Queen Mary captain. That's a real problem. Try stall them a little bit by at least two or three minutes. And the Burns Night Pipers are playing. But will the Queen's room miss the dinner deadline? We get into the service at seven o'clock tonight, so that's when yeah. things uh, start heating up. The QE2 Burns Night Evening is finally here. Outside, the sound of bagpipes fills the air. But inside... After thousands of man-hours, the events team have a nerve-shredding dash to dress the Queen's room and add their last-minute touches. But the room must pass one final inspection from Grant. Just looking at the smaller details, to be honest. Check the napkins, check the tablecloths, make sure the chairs are, are up to standard. Sometimes they'll miss a glass or two. We get into the service at 7 o'clock tonight, so that's when things uh, start heating up again. The room finally looks ready. But does it retain the magic from its Atlantic crossing heyday? My goodness gracious. Long-serving crewman Peter would know. Now, this is amazing. Of course, this is the room where I met Her Majesty in this very room all those years ago. I'm not mistaken, it was down there. But to see like it is now is, is fantastic, frankly. And it very much is evoking memories, you know. Stunning. Really stunning. But will it impress the homesick partygoers expecting a Burns night to remember? We've only just moved here six months ago, so it's nice to get a bit of toast, taste of home. Similar nine years in Dubai and first burn supper. I think the fact it was in the QET probably drew us both a bit, well, both, both yeah, a bit more interested in it. I have to admit now that I haven't been to many burns nights. This is my first one. While the booze has the party flowing in the Queen's room... You ready? ..the kitchen is bracing itself for service. A lot of pressure. Always a lot of pressure. Always. Clientele in Dubai? Very, very, very demanding. But the party-goers on the quarter-deck aren't the hotel's only demanding guests. Captain, I'll say welcome to you, too. Nice to meet you. The captain of the visiting Queen Mary II has arrived. Shall we proceed inside? For a cocktail reception on the top deck. Trouble is, the lift's broken. Ah, that's a real problem. Now we really have to get a fix. How do we get this fixed now? We have to call them back in? Of course. And the VIP guests are heading Grant's way. Listen, I need to have an update on where you are with the guests right now. And then we will be, as well, the first guest to use the lift. The inside is not done properly yet. Um, and I'm just concerned right now that we can't have them come this way if the railings aren't done properly. So my engineering team are... Sorry, if you give me a second, please. OK, OK, OK. Five, OK, five minutes. Guys, listen, we've got five minutes now, OK? They're coming now, please, quickly. Try stall them a little bit by at least two or three minutes. Facing the old rooms here. Right. So this is just finished, actually, but we will They're walking towards the elevators now. Um, guys, are we ready? It's ready. OK, so... <sighs> Good. Thank you. I test them ten times myself, so... Uh, go first, because you have to take us when we leave the lift. <laughs> With the lift back in action... <laughs> the, lift now, so let's see. the cocktail evening's back on track. <laughs> 
and for the hotel Scottish guests. How many more, Navni? The Burns Night Dinner is about to start. Nine non veg. But no one can eat a bite until the traditional address is given to the haggis. And Chef Dino has the honour of carrying it in. So if we could all please be upstanding for the haggis. The soups are being lined up for service. This address needs a sharp finish. And cut up for ready slip. Ten singles, drop it, ten sales, breast like on a ditch. Ladies and gentlemen, the haggis. The haggis. With the address done and dusted, dinner can be served. It's going back to stuff my mum would make. And little tastes of food like that just bring you home. Chicken, vegetarian, haggis, one side. Up next, the main course, haggis, neeps and tatties. Events organiser Graham wanted larger helpings. So Chef Dino is scrutinising every plate before it goes out. A little bit of consistency just got lost. Portion size got a little bit down, but we rejected a few and pushed them back in again. Haggis was brilliant. Everyone at the table said yeah. the same. I thought it was very good, huh? With the haggis hitting the spot and partying expats hitting the dance floor, the grand reopening of the Queen's Room appears to be a success. Fantastic evening, boys did a great job tonight. Chefs worked very well, so a great night overall. To be honest, I think we need to kind of stick with this venue uh, for all the burnt suppers because it's so popular um, and everyone's got great feedback about. It's a bit of a showstopper. To put events together on the QE2 is a challenge in itself, um, but we've had success after success after success, so touch wood. The ship's crew battle countless challenges every day to make her new life as a hotel a success. And for tonight at least, they've just about managed to pull it off. It's February, the height of the tourist season in Dubai. Good morning, welcome aboard the QE2. This is Antia speaking, may I help you? And for the hotel's 283 staff, today is going to be an especially busy one. Happy Valentine's. Hello, would you like a chocolate? Valentine's Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, Lord, they're falling off. The ship moved. <laughs> Thank you very much, isn't it? Thank you so much. <laughs> I won't forgive me flowers. <laughs> Makes oh. you think, hmm. You know, where's mine? Where's mine? <laughs> <laughs> Away from the guests, the hotel's $100 million programme of renovations is still cracking on. When the ship was brought to Dubai in 2008, she'd been due to be scrapped. Original handrails. This is the original carpet design. CEO Hamza Mustafa was put in charge of transforming her into a modern hotel. So I've had a very difficult task of finding the right balance between recreating her, however, at the same time, not losing the essence and the soul of who she was. Just over two years ago, she was launched as the UAE's only floating hotel. Oops. But only 40% of her is open, while the rest is still being worked on. Because she's so big and because there are zones that are secluded from the others, we've been able to open sections of her and keep other sections closed off. But to keep renovating her and guarantee her long-term future, the QE2 needs to pay her way. General Manager Yunal and his top team have two big events happening on board today that need to go well. OK, our favourite subject, Valentine's. <laughs> Head of Marketing Katie and Theatre Director Robert are organising an opera gala. 
Everything with regard to the entertainment is, is, is there. The opera singers fly in on the morning of the event. But even at this late stage, they're still not sold out. As I mentioned, and no offence, guys, this is Valentine's Day and it's up to the men to book it. No, if it was the women's job, this would have been booked out months ago, just Absolutely. like Christmas and New Year. So yeah, I imagine longer. it's going to be last minute. <laughs> and on top of that, Executive Chef Dino and Food and Beverage Director Grant are putting on a Valentine's brunch for 450. Hey, Chef Dino, so what do we have so for Valentine brunch? We've got as many aphrodisiac style products subject to cost and availability. Of course, there's always going to be my oysters, asparagus. Um, dessert will be chocolates and hearts. So and that's what's different from usual brunch? Different from usual brunch, okay. yeah. Friday brunch has become a big earner for Dubai's hotels, as it's the place to celebrate and socialise. And they can be pretty lavish affairs, costing up to £150 a head. So the expectations on Dino are huge. But one thing that sets the QE2 apart from other Dubai hotels is her British heritage. Please do come on. It's head of tours Peter's job to take guests on guided trips through her past. I want to show you the last ever daily programme of the QE2 when we sailed into Dubai. So here we have the night's entertainment, and Des O'Connor was the headliner on that particular occasion. One of only two existing crew members who sailed on the ship back in the day, he knows more than anyone about her romantic past. There is an ambience about the QE2 that defines romanticism, whether you're at sea or not. But yes, I think she's very romantic on many levels. She's seen her fair share of famous lovers, from Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton en route to New York, to Nelson Mandela, who proposed to his third wife, Grassa Michelle, on board the ship in 1998. And I'm pretty sure, in fact, 2151 was Nelson Mandela's suite. I mean, how special was that, to be engaged on the QE2? The ship even boasts a portrait of the newly engaged Princess Elizabeth. You can tell, really, there the affection they have and the romance in that picture and how happy they are. But if the ship is going to end happily ever after in Dubai, it'll take hard graft to make her one of the country's top hotels. As Chef Dino knows only too well. Are you in control time-wise? Yeah? It's scary. It's scary every day. Every day. You don't know what's, what's coming around the corner. By 12 o'clock, Dino and his team have to finish over 100 dishes to wow 450 guests at the Valentine's brunch. The Valentine's Day as a whole is very important to us on the QE2. Uh, it's, it's not just a food concept delivery. It's an overall package. It's the, the full experience. It's from the entertainment to obviously the food presentation, the ambience. Basically all the presentations have to be right. They have to come together. Touch wood, we'll, we'll pull this one off. In the pastry kitchen, head pastry chef Ida and her team are getting stuck in with the sweet treats for the brunch. Valentine's in Dubai is big. It's very big. The Arab world, they are very, very romantic. So everything's going to be pinks and reds and hearts and flowers. Kami chefs Noor and Ahmed are feeling the love. I'm a hopeless romantic. Valentine's is one of my favorite holidays. Especially seeing all the old couples come and celebrate Valentine's here. You see them dancing. It's just nice, you know, people celebrating love. But right now, They've got over 1,000 cakes and puddings still to make, and less than two hours to do it. We've got chocolate mousses, heart-shaped mousses, raspberry mousse, raspberry cakes. This menu has been set a week ago by Chef Ida. Everything has to be done properly, so that's another form of expectations and deadlines. And their deadline's about to get even tighter because head pastry chef Ida has just discovered a crucial delivery hasn't arrived. Uh, we're waiting for cream at the moment. Cream and white chocolate. And it's not just a bit of cream they're waiting for. It's 40 litres of the stuff. 
it's a really big deal because if we don't have it, then we can't serve it. So it needs to be here within the next hour, I would say. Just waiting, waiting around for the cream and waiting until it arrives. It just holds all the production until you get the cream. So if there was no cream, there will be no Valentine's. There's no, if it doesn't come, it needs to come, because otherwise we're screwed. Coming up, is the audience for tonight's gala opera literally going to be blown away? Let me see what the weather is saying. Uh, 18 degrees and windy. It's not looking great. And there's another storm brewing in reception. Look, I just need to know we still have 47 dirty rooms and it's quarter to two. The world's most famous cruise liner, the QE2, has a new home as a floating hotel in Dubai. Her 283 strong international staff have to pull out all the stops to make her a success. How can I assist you? We always got to be on top of our game because every day, every second in Dubai, there's something new opening up, something new happening. Dubai has become a top tourist destination for over half a million Brits a year seeking a bit of winter sun. With temperatures in February reaching 26 degrees, you'd think the one thing you wouldn't have to worry about was the weather. Tonight's onboard event, an evening of opera under the stars, is under threat. It's due to be held outside on the ship's deck. Yeah. Organisers Robert and Katie are worried there's a storm on the way. It's so annoying because Dubai is... We can count on beautiful weather, <laughs> 364 day. days of the year. Yeah. The one day we want to do something spectacular. It's great, isn't it? We can't... Uh, let me see what the um, weather is saying in Dubai. 18, Look, it's saying... Uh, 18 degrees and windy. <laughs> it's not looking great. Yeah. We need to make a decision. I, yeah. I am looking at this at this moment in time. Um, it is such a massive risk. If Grant starts laying out his stuff, we run, put electricity out here. We are, yeah. The thing is, we have positioned it as, you know, a night of opera under the stars. I'm sure there'd be more complaints yeah, if we sure. did a night of opera under with, the rain and with, stars. with, with <laughs> rain and, and um, wind yeah. and it being, you know, you, you have to be sensible. Okay. Because if you're putting glasses out, you're putting out stuff. Then, then we, we call it, we call it and we go, we go in the Grand Lounge. We go in we the, have Grand to the Grand So tonight's event will be held inside in the historic Grand Lounge. Opera not quite under the stars. Back in the pastry kitchen, cake production for the Valentine's brunch has ground to a halt because the crucial cream delivery hasn't come. But the confectionery gods are finally smiling on Chef Ida. Oh, finally, cream is here. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you so much. Because her missing cream has arrived in the nick of time. Thankfully, it's here now. Darling, can you help with the cream, please? Let them eat cake. Let them eat cake. As Mary Antoinette said, let them eat cake. As well as the sweet treats, Dino's team are hard at it, preparing a feast of other dishes for the Valentine's brunch guests. It looks beautiful. Wow. There are a 1,000 perfect Yorkshire puddings to make and 700 oysters flown in specially from France to shuck. The food might be the star of this Valentine's brunch, but it needs the perfect romantic setting to really show it off. Chef Dino has commissioned kitchen artist Ran Deeper to make themed ice sculptures for the restaurant. We're going to set some roses into uh, ice blocks and then he's going to carve some intricate works on the front. Lots of hearts, lots of cupids, lots of arrows. I just hope the ice sculptures survive the four-hour brunch with, with 500 people inside uh, generating heat. But first, they have to get a trolley full of very slippery ice sculptures from the cold stores on shore onto the ship. Thing is getting cracked, so I need to be careful. Now for the trickiest bit, the gangplank. Made it in one piece. More or less. And Chef Dino seems happy. In the next half an hour, this will clear. Yeah. Once it starts defrosting and clears, it'll look good. 
Mm. Head of marketing Katie wants today's brunch guests to post pictures of the ship looking its absolute best. But she doesn't seem entirely impressed with all of Dino's decorations. It looks like a Star Trek funeral. They're going. No. Hmm, definitely not love at first sight. Maybe if you took the ribbons off. Maybe the pearls. Maybe the board. The heart's nice. It looks, you know, like they've gone to a lot of effort, but nah. Nah. Chef, these need to go away. We need to take all of this down, yeah? Thank you, Chef. Less is sometimes more. Don't get me wrong, the guys, you know, they've had some materials, they've done a good job with what they've got. They really have. Opinions, everyone has one. But luckily, today, mine's the one that counts. Can we remove all of this? Yeah, Honestly, I, I don't like it. You like Star Trek, don't you? No. <laughs> Not funny. You look in ship shape. <laughs> you see, it's probably because I'm like this. It's the reason why I don't have a Valentine's Day date today. <laughs> As well as pulling out all the stops for crowd pleasers like the brunch, the hotel still has the day-to-day -day work of managing its 224 rooms and suites. And it looks like they're all fully booked today. Yes, so unfortunately for today, due to the fully booked situation, there is no availability for the check-out. How, how many check-ins have we got? So, oh. <laughs> no, not chickens, I think check in. There's no, never no, no chickens anywhere. I'm going to take the seven. Oh gosh, it's gone long. Seven. seven. So we're full cap, we're, we're full occupants. Assistant manager Anthea is in sole charge of reception today. Well, Valentine's Day is one of our busiest days. We have a lot of check ins, a lot of checkouts, hundreds, and we have to make sure everyone is there in time. We don't want to put anyone in a bad mood on Valentine's Day. But before the next guests can check in, Beds have to be made and rooms have to be cleaned. And housekeeping only have a two-hour window to do it. Housekeeping is under a lot of pressure, especially today, being Valentine's Day. There are a lot of setups to be done. Rooms are taking longer for that reason, so they do have a lot of pressure. And we do put a lot of pressure on them as well, because we have to face the guests. Hi, good afternoon. How are you guys doing today? Checking in? Yes, we are. Oh, OK, great. Yeah. You can just give us half a minute. One of okay. the guys will be done soon. Okay. They say that front office and reception is like, it's like a stage. Hi. Hi. Hi, how are you? Oh, look at you. As soon as you go out, you have to put on the smile. Are you doing anything special for Valentine's Day? I think we're going for the dinner. OK, yeah. cool. Yeah, you just go up onto the ship over here and you'll press Q on the elevator. OK, okay enjoy. But there's only so much smiling you can do if people are waiting to check in and the rooms aren't ready. So Anthea needs to make sure they're all done before the next guests arrive. Hi there, this is Anthea speaking. Um, look, I just need to know, we still have 47 dirty rooms and it's quarter to two. How are we doing? Well. OK, and the club rooms? Because a lot of the club rooms have checked out late, so um, we need to get them sorted. Housekeeping attendant Isaac is originally from Ghana. He's been on the ship for almost a year. This is the first time I mean, doing this housekeeping job. So, yeah, we back home, we used to play football. But now, this is just a good job. You get it here. Chelsea is my team. I would like to play one day. He'll need to be on the ball today because there's only 15 minutes to put on clean sheets and make each room spotless. Some guests have also requested an extra Valentine sparkle. This romance package takes an extra 20 minutes, which is adding to the pressure on Anthea. Sanju, please, we need to start getting things ready a bit quicker. Um, it's getting a bit late. There's only so many times I can call housekeeping and tell them 
There is an extreme amount of competition in Dubai. Now I think we're standing about 650 hotels in Dubai. That's not counting apartments and we have to make sure that our ranking is... This is the first thing that people look at before they book. Oh, okay, sure, it's just this way. I'll show you. We're over the hump, I would say. <laughs> With the rooms now spotless, there's a surprise gift for Anthea. Oh, my word. Just for you. I'm accepting kisses if you'd like to. Oh, well, you see, I don't want to burst your bubble, but I got one as well. Oh, you did? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not special. That's not the only thing getting Anthea hot under the collar. Good afternoon, it's Anthea speaking. Um, look, the lobby is quite warm. It's a little bit hot in the lobby. Can we make it? Can we turn on the AC a bit? Thank you. There might be a storm forecast later, but right now, the sun's reappeared. Keeping the QE2 cool in the Dubai heat has proved tricky. When the ship was built in the 1960s, she was designed as an ocean-going liner to cruise the Atlantic and the Med. We deal with 40 degrees temperatures in Dubai. You don't get that temperature in the Atlantic. So the infrastructure within the ship was designed for heating more than cooling. Sorting out the aircon was one of the many things CEO Hamza had to tackle when he took over the ship two years ago. So we've had to re-engineer and change all of the infrastructure so she can remain in Dubai, which has been, I would say, the hardest challenge, the major challenge we've faced so far. And it's an ongoing battle. Daily? The spikes are because you've turned the AHUs on? Yeah, Thursday and Friday, Saturday, yeah. so that is the, you know, busy days, so we are getting more consumption. We had to triple the air conditioning capacity that the ship originally had. Actually quadruple it. We've had to completely redesign the air conditioning network inside the ship to accommodate the harsh summer weather in Dubai. Six decks above, in the ship's main restaurant, things are about to really heat up. Because 450 hungry guests are due to arrive any minute for a lavish Valentine's brunch. And at 80 quid a head, they're expecting something pretty spectacular. Valentine's guest expectation is slightly higher than normal, but uh, it's, it's, it's done, it's done. The, 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 the trick and the challenge now is to maintain a set standard for the next four hours. Dino's team have put on an array of aphrodisiac foods to get them in the mood. Uh, oyster make your body like uh, no more uh, energetic. <laughs> 700 oysters, 20 kilos of mussels. Um, yeah, if this doesn't get people going, then nothing will. Nothing will. And it looks like one of the chefs has let all this talk of romance go to his head. Who came up with the name Blind Love Dal Makni? Chef Zor. Chef Zor. Dal wait, Makni. wait, wait. Spicy love. Spicy love. <laughs> ah, spicy, spicy love. love. Wow. <laughs> but the hard work's not over yet for Dino's team. Let's keep it clean, let's keep it tidy. Your presentation, Mohammed, beautiful, sexy. Naylin, beautiful, sexy. You've got to keep it looking like this for the entire duration of Valentine's brunch. Do we have enough food for everybody? Yes, yes, sir. yes done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good job, let's have a fantastic Valentine's brunch. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's time to get this party started. Katie's strip-down display is proving popular. As are Dino's romantic oysters. And Chef Ida's Valentine's pastries, complete with cream, are going down like, well, hotcakes. It was really nice, especially my dad loved the seafood. And my favorite part were the desserts. As more guests get stuck in, Dino's perfect food is starting to look less than perfect. Tidy up these things, yeah. But with the wine flowing, love is in the air. <laughs> it's my 73rd birthday, so we're having a family, three generation family celebration. You were, what, living in Clyde Bank? In Clyde Bank when the, the QE2 is launched. I think it's wonderful, it isn't it, in Dubai? Oh, it looks enormous. <laughs>
just something you've grown up with the QE2. So something you've seen growing up. So where else would you go? On Valentine's Day. On Valentine's Day. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Even though there was no Valentine's card. <laughs> Why would you need a Valentine's card when you're on the QE2? <laughs> yeah. In Dubai, with the man of your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up. I need the bus to be here, like this. Katie's having trouble parking. No, 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 back. It's like, so you're at that angle, I said. And will tonight's opera event hit the high notes? Big tonight. Not a good start. How is this possible? The QE2 has a new permanent home as a floating hotel in Dubai. She's still as British as they come, but she's jostling for space in an already overcrowded hotel market. And that's not the only challenge. Only 40% of this grand old ship is open, while the rest is still being renovated. It's been a, a mammoth restoration job for us, redeveloping the ship, but at the same time, renovating the ship. We've had to open the ship because we had to generate income so we could sustain her operational costs. To secure her future, the team running her need to keep the pennies rolling in. It's not a charity project, just a heritage project. It's a commercial business. The money the QE2 makes is the money the QE2 can spend. So, you know, if we don't make money, we can't keep restoring her. It's up to head of marketing, Katie, to come up with new ways to pull in the guests. A lot of pressure is on the marketing department to make it work. Her latest brainwave is a new initiative she's hoping will put the hotel on the map. The city sightseeing bus, Dubai, um, it stops off at all the iconic destinations. And I had a great idea. I say it's great, might not be. Red double-decker bus, let's bring it on the quayside, put it in front of the QE2 and have a photograph taken. Now all Katie has to do is get both British icons into the perfect spot for the photo. I need the bus to be here, like this. So, yeah, but like this. I want the bus to come underneath the logo and so it's like facing the ship and under the QE2. Not as easy as it sounds. Reverse back slightly, just slightly. No, 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 back. It's like, so you're at that angle, I said. So go forward, forward. Yeah, stay there a second. Kyle, How, is that looking good? But there's one thing still spoiling Katie's picture. OK, now I want everyone off. Driver, stay there, though. With the pesky sightseers out of the way, Katie can finally get her shot. I think that is the shot, right? Beautiful shot. We'll probably launch this next week because we've got a lot going on right now. So, yeah, I'm happy. Rather more urgent is tonight's opera event. The chairs facing the stage. Yep, straight in the middle. A last-minute change of venue means banqueting manager Mohammed has less than an hour to transform the historic Grand Lounge into a romantic setting for 200 guests. With Valentine's especially, you only get couples. <laughs> so we, we, it's tables of twos that we need to fit in, and it's, it's much more difficult because, of course, that means more tables. All the furniture that we have is actually the original of what it was. They're very heavy. Back in the days when the ship used to move, so just to make sure that the tables don't actually rock away, they have to make sure that the bases are very heavy. We have to do it very quietly, so that means moving a lot of tables quickly in a very slow kind of manner, which is kind of contradictory, but that's what we have to do. <laughs> the decision was taken to move the opera inside because bad weather was forecast. True to form, out on deck, the sunshine is now blazing. But Robert, who is organising the event, is philosophical. It's a beautiful day. It's a little bit breezy still. Weather. OK, so it's going to be OK tonight. It's going to go down to about 16 centigrade, something like that, which is a little bit chilly. So was it the right decision? I think it was. Anyway, the decision's made, so you go forward. So all you can do ever is go forward. Make the decision, go forward. He who prevaricates is fa fails, I think, or he who, has, he who hesitates is fails. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
Classical singers Antonio and Fiona have flown in from the UK especially for tonight's event to serenade the guests with a selection of opera hits. Never been on a, a ship before, let alone on the, the QE2 here in, in Dubai. So it's a fantastic experience for us to come and share a bit of opera for a, an evening for those in love or planning to be in love for their Valentine experience. But it seems they're having some artistic differences about the dry ice. She doesn't like the smoke, as you can see on her face. <laughs> So she switch the smoke off. <laughs> she doesn't like a smoke I'm or anything. I'm a soprano. You're a soprano. So she, she, I'm a soprano. So she doesn't like a smoke. I can high, high notes. I can't sing if I've got yeah. to breathe in dry ice. Tonight's event continues a long tradition of live entertainment on board the ship. Back in her sailing days, with 2,000 passengers to keep amused, the QE2 had a theatre and onboard casino. The Grand Lounge was one of her largest entertainment venues. Everything from musicals and magicians to classical concerts and cabaret have been hosted here. The ship also had its own in-house band who played there. Brother and sister, Paul and Natalie's parents, first met when they were performing in it. There's our dad there, band leader. We wanted to come along here and see where they were. Been waiting for the QE2 to reopen. I think they'd have both been proud to think that we made the effort to come here and do that. So I think they had a really good time from what I gather. Yeah, <laughs> Cruising the seas and uh, having a, an absolute ball, literally. Mum and Dad are no, unfortunately no longer here. Uh, Mum passed away when she was very young at 48 and Dad seven years ago when he was 85. So they've never had a chance to come back here. So that's re another reason that we're here, really, yeah. to relive it, because he spoke so much of it, about it. And even when he was really poorly in the end, the doctor said to him, is there anything you want to know or anything you'd like to do? And he said, yeah, can I go on the QE2? Bless him. I think that's the main reason we're here, isn't it? Yeah. If you look at the, the flagpole there... Yeah. That's a flagpole, so... Oh, yeah. It was here. It was. It was right here. That's amazing. I think that's it. There. Okay. So do you want okay. To... Oh, it's really emotional. It really is. I can't tell you. It's just strange, but lovely. Absolutely lovely, and makes me almost feel closer. I don't know. And everything, you know. She's here. She's here. Alongside the big live music venues where Paul and Natalie's parents played. The ship has cosier spots to while away the voyage. Tucked away on quarter deck is her very own authentic British pub, the Golden Lion. So here we are then in the Golden Lion pub, and we are the oldest pub in Dubai, hashtag. It was thought, it's a British ship, shall we have a British pub? Would it work? They didn't know, frankly, but it worked very well indeed. And if you ever remember the entertainer Jim Bowen, if you do, I don't know, but if you did, we'd had many a duet in here for karaoke, Bobby Davro the same. It's continued to prove popular in her new Dubai home, but if there's one thing every good British pub needs, ah. it's a traditional pub quiz. Here's the sales team. Are you ready for the quiz tomorrow? I will win. The hotel staff teams are about to go head-to-head uh -huh. -head in the new Golden Lion pub quiz. Are you coming to the quiz tomorrow? Promise? Promise. Your sales. You should know loads about the QET. Competitions already brewing. Here's Lillian. Are you ready for the quiz tomorrow? Yes, I am. Are you going to be... Who do you think is going to win? I am going to rock it. HR. We don't let her win. It's consequences. No, we're just good at this. Come on. See, I think I'd win. You think you'd win? Yeah, because I'm also helping with questions. <laughs> and I'm a, <laughs> bad I'm a bad cheat as well. <laughs> but before they can pit their wits against each other, they've got a more pressing event to deal with. Because the guests are beginning to arrive for tonight's Valentine's Opera Gala. There's just time for food and beverage director Grant to do some last-minute checks. They haven't double-checked their tables. Uh, the legs are not straight at the bottom. Check table number 23 for me quickly. 
And checked means checked right now, huh? Because you're expecting guests soon. Look, uh, an eye for detail is always key in our industry. I mean, that's what sets your regular hotels apart from your really high-end hotels. And it looks like the change of venue hasn't put anyone off. It's full. We can't fit any more in. So, yeah, absolutely delighted with the numbers. I think um, we couldn't fit any more in. As the singers begin, the team can serve the starters. Tonight is all about precision timing, but Grant's noticed a problem. Salmon? Oof. Chef, Salmon. chef, chef, chef. Don't send anything yet, please. OK, just so. Having been kept chilled against the Dubai heat, the starters need time to settle to room temperature. Only some of them haven't. How is this possible? Grant's precise timings are going out the window. I don't have 15 minutes. I can't delay this whole performance by 15 minutes now. Big tonight, to be honest with you. Yeah, standards are high on the QE2, so I'm not, uh, I'm not comfortable sending out the food now that we have. Coming up, things are getting out of hand for Grant. I have a nice table number. Quickly, quickly, run, 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 run. And underhand in the battle of the QE2 brains. No, what's happened is my phone. <laughs> The most famous ocean liner in the world, the QE2, is a bastion of all things British. And she's soon to have her very own pub quiz in the onboard Golden Lion pub. The hotel staff teams are daggers drawn. Sales and marketing. It's a quiz night. S and M. <laughs> do you think we're gonna win? Yeah. See HR Absolutely. think they're gonna win. I do trivia for fun, Lillian. This is true, she is competitive. Mm. The QE2 will always be British. She will always maintain that very Britishness about her. We really channel that, we nourish it. So here's the audience now, I'm in the middle, and we are now reading the questions out, you see. So what, oh, there we are, good start. What is a cartophilist? Head of Tours Peter has the starring role of Quizmaster. And that would be a collector of cigarette cards. Well, I didn't know that at all. <laughs> it may sound a bit corny, but it, again, evokes many memories because that was my job in those days. We used to do the quizzes every morning. So, alienphobia is a fear of garlic. Is that true or is it false? Actually, it's true. Some people do fear garlic. Well, I didn't know that. Back at the opera, not all the drama is on stage. Starter service has been halted, while food and beverage director Grant makes sure every plate is correct. I'll be checking most of the plates before they go out now uh, to ensure that it's the right quality that I want and that our guests want. Most of the guests are enjoying the music, blissfully unaware of the delay. The has just gone out. We're about 20 minutes behind service. We gave it enough time to settle, uh, which it needed, um, and it went out and nothing's come back, so, so far so good. Uh, yeah. yeah. But it's not Grant's night. He's had an emergency call from one of the restaurants on the lower deck. Rakesh, quickly double time downstairs to pavilion, please. Pavilion, very badly hit now, OK? Watch your step. We have allocated uh, a lot of the manning to the Valentine's event, and uh, we've taken some stuff from the actual restaurant. So they're struggling a lot now with the amount of guests that have come through. Good evening, guys. How are you? A large group of unexpected guests have just walked in wanting food. Keeping them waiting could mean a bad review. Salad. Chef, how many tables on the pass? We are right now one, two, three, four, five. Five tables we have. You got a new order on the pass, chef. Yeah, yeah. There's nothing for it but to pitch in. I have a nice table number. Quickly, 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 quickly. Run, 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 run. I'll get the bread, Avanash. I'll get the bread. You get your passes. Six pieces? Yeah. Yes. Table six. Table. Chef, four minutes. Table number six, pick up. And there's no let up upstairs at the opera. To be honest with you, I'm not the sort of guy who's going to sit down and be 
in an office all day, I really can't handle that. <laughs> um, I need to be moving, I need to be running. Um, and the intensity of being on the floor and in the kitchen, it's nothing better, nothing better. What a rush. Knife and a fork, quickly please, knife and a fork. Thanks. The delay with the starters has had a knock-on effect on the main course. 74. All right, two more chicken, please. Yeah. Ready here. So once again, Grant has to roll up his sleeves. Two chicken. Can I pick up? Yes. All right, 76. Go. Right. Extra bread. Two more chicken, please. Go, go, go. Two chicken. Chicken, chicken. Well, the event tonight went uh, exceptionally well. Uh, we had a bit of a rocky start, as you as you know earlier, but uh, the staff really pulled together afterwards, and the main course went out superbly well, uh, with absolutely no challenges. Uh, actually, within 10 minutes, the main course was out. But have tonight's guests been swept off their feet? Uh, well, it was a surprise for Valentine's Day. So, uh, but do you like the surprise? I love it. Yeah? Basically, I'm obsessed with the Queen, tea and crumpets, and Titanic. <laughs> That's why I chose it. <laughs> this is the perfect mix of my favorite things. I think the opera singers are blowing them away. It's a very romantic evening. Everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. My wife has turned up um, and uh, brought me her last Rolo. So romance is in the air. People absolutely loved it. Honestly, a brilliant, brilliant end to a very, very good day. But there's one more challenge for the hotel staff, the pub quiz. Chef Dino's been cooking up a storm all day, but he's not finished yet. It's crispy, light and everything. OK. Fish nicely seasoned? Yeah? OK. OK. So tonight we've got the staff in, and we're going to give them a little, a little uh, taster platter. Some traditional British food, some scotch egg, a little bit of cottage pie, fish and chips. Actually, they're the worst people to cook for. They're the, they're the ones that will moan the most. Oh, it wasn't hot. Oh, it wasn't crispy. Testing, testing. Pens at the ready. QE2. It's about to start. So, everyone, good afternoon. Welcome to the quiz on the QE2 in the, in the uh, Golden Lion. First question is, how many world cruises did QE2 do? Yeah, write the answers down, please. Don't call out. What year was the Royal Voyage, and what was the purpose of it? Going back on board after all those years away, I was more than pleasantly surprised, and I felt overjoyed when I found that everybody had that love for her. Everything they do, they do for the, for the love and the future of this ship, and that is lovely. What is a baby oyster called? <laughs> I was born in 66. So I've grown up with the QE2 in existence. So it, it's, it's exciting, it's intriguing, you don't know what's around every corner. Long may she sail. In which Australian TV soap did Danny Minogue star? Danny Minogue star. I'm sure that in 50 years' time, I'd like to look back and think, I was part of this living history. No, of course I haven't used my phone. <laughs> There's a little bit of discrepancy there. It's not just a ship she's got a soul and it's only when you step on board you realize how truly unique it is the scores are in but who will claim the qe2 quiz crown so let's go around here and how did we do what did we get we're checking here we won basically we won <laughs> three wrongs so how many what's the total what's 10 27. 20 27 Boom. Boom. Katie's convinced she's got it in the bag. Well, I like that. That's class. The square root of 100. How about down here? 11. What did you get? 29. We brought theirs. No. Did it? Pipped at the post by Dino, Grant, and General Manager Yanal. After four decades at sea, the QE2 is embarking on a new journey as a floating hotel in Dubai. Hi, good afternoon, ma'am. How are you doing? Good, checking in. 
Now permanently docked, staff have spent over two years transforming her from flagship cruise liner to successful hotel. Your room is ready, captain's club room with balcony. It's a daily challenge to make it all work. And today, it's the busiest day of the week, Friday. It's the start of the weekend in Dubai. And here, Friday isn't Friday without brunch. There's a massive trend for brunches in Dubai. And it's just pure indulgence. Everything that you could imagine. Every Friday, the hotel welcomes 250 guests, many of them expats hungry for a taste of home for a British-style Sunday lunch. Yorkshire pudding, your roast potato, your beef, and your chicken. Crumbles, bread and butter pudding, sponges, steamed sponges, anything that can go with custard. The British here, they love the Yorkshire pudding very much. As it looks beautiful. Wow. Oh, man. Right, real British Yorkshire pudding. While staff keep the hotels, eight restaurants and bars and 200 plus rooms up and running, behind the scenes, the ship's renovation rumbles on. The project is only halfway through and has already cost over $100 million. CEO Hamza Mustafa is making sure the investment pays off. Yeah, I get to have free food here whilst also managing guests' expectations. The QE2 is a ship first, and some of, some of our guests forget that they're on a ship. Hold on, we're walking into the corridor and it looks like it's tilting on one side. And yes, it is tilting, you are on a ship. Now we have completely changed the concept of what is the QE2 when it comes to lighting, when it comes to plumbing, when it comes to wiring. I've had to change all the infrastructure of the ship to modernize her. People want to come to the ship to celebrate what the ship was. So it's constantly been the struggle between the future and the past, the future and the past. Do I stick to what she's famous for or do I change and gamble with new concepts that can work or might not work? And this week, it's crunch time for the ship's biggest renovation gamble so far the reopening of the most important restaurant on board, the Queen's Grill. Almost at the end of a seven-month makeover, the grill was once the brightest jewel in the QE2 crown and a favourite hangout of the rich and famous. We hope you will enjoy this uh, sort of one-hour tour. Um... These days, it's a treasure trove of tall tales for Head of Tours Peter. The Queen's Grill in the day was your first first class. There is a story that uh, once some uh, passenger said, yes, I'd like elephant, please, and they said, would you like African or Indian? I'm sure it isn't true, but I mean, that, you know, that gives you an idea of the lengths they would go. So it was wonderful, and the Queen's Grill itself stood for a lot. When I first heard it was being refurbished, I was a little sad, because I thought some of the history may be going. With so much of the ship's heritage at stake, it's up to designer Chris to steer a narrow course between past and present. You walk into the Q2, it's in a different world. And that's the magic, I think. Oh, wow, that's nice. Perfect. Whatever you add on has to emphasize this. Nick, I think I like it. Beautiful, the patina is lovely. It's the size a little bit small, I think. But good thing we got the other one. Dubai is a very modern city. And I think this is why we want to bring this heritage to our guests way a bit. this way a bit. It's an ongoing process, but attention to detail is everything. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. Love it. Let's crack on with something else. <laughs> and for CEO Hamza, getting those details right could make or break the Queen's Grill and the future of the hotel. I do get criticised at times that we've changed names or I've moved art pieces around or I've moved a chair. So we've always had to find the balance between keeping the enthusiast happy and to keep your corporate customer happy to make the ship work. But bringing the Queen's Grill up to date isn't just new seating and a lick of paint. Executive chef Dino's giving the food a major makeover too. The Queen's Grill originally was a very, very fine dining venue. When the ship was sailing, the waiting list for passengers booking the Queen's Grill could sometimes stretch to 12 to 16, 18 months. We need to change that entirely, where this becomes a 
walk-in off the street venue, but very, very, very good quality, quintessentially British outlet. Start frying the fritters, put on the pass. The grill started serving fancy food to the well-heeled in the early 70s. And Dino's got a book of old menus to remind him what the food was like. This book captures what the Queen's Grill was all about in the day. Lou de Mer, pomme de terre nouvelle, this is basically sea bass, vegetables and new potatoes. The concept that we're going with now is we're making it more funky, we're making it more fun, we're making it more casual. Dino's new menu swaps the heavy classic staples for lighter, simpler dishes. Caramelized cauliflower puree on the bottle, yeah? But less stodge on the plate doesn't mean less pressure for Dino's 60-plus chefs. I need that blender, that's it. I need that blender for five minutes. What is a big deal for that? I think in every kitchen, the pressure is really, really high at all times. But you know what? That's why we're here. We like it. The adrenaline rush. Get everything fast. It's the same as jumping off a plane, I guess. Sometimes. Stress is not the word. I had black hair before you arrived. And today, it's a race against time. In control, time-wise? Yeah. Pressure's certainly on. Time is against us. Because after three months of work, Dino's bosses will be dropping in later for a final tasting of the new dishes. Today will be a menu tasting kitchen side, 28, 30 different dishes. It's very important to get it bang on. If the boss likes it, then all good. If he doesn't like it, I'm the next kebab. Coming up. Enough, 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 enough. Will Dino's new menu leave a good taste in everyone's mouth? OK, we don't have the hours in the days to wait, wait, wait. Guys, come on! And the hotel's ambitious refurb plans are left literally hanging in mid-air. Get things moving! After 40 years at sea, the QE2's now got to make it as a hotel in ultra-competitive Dubai. It's an important week on board, as the ship reopens its most renowned restaurant, the Queen's Grill. And down in the kitchen... Brush, 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 put it fast. Stress is reaching fever pitch for executive chef Dino and his crew. How long do you need? I want plating done. Okay, sea salt, sea salt. I think stress comes hand in hand with this job. More so when you've got the opening of a restaurant, it just, it just puts the cream on top of the cake and then the cherry on top of that. With the Queen's Grill launch night looming, Dino's new menu faces its final hurdle. So this. A tasting with general manager Yanal and director of food and beverage, Grant. Altogether, we've done about six or seven different tastings. So the chefs have been cooking off their rocker right now. Um, but it's just to make sure that we understand what we're serving and we get the product right. Chef Prasad, who's in charge of the new restaurant, is hoping they've now perfected their dishes. But even before the first forkful... How long before we can start? The bosses are less than impressed. Enough, 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 enough. OK, we don't have the hours in the days to wait, wait, wait. Because plating up's taking too long. Minimum 25 seconds per plate. Too much going on. Imagine you have 120 guests in at the same time. How is that feasible? With food finally making it onto the plate... Let's eat. Dino and the bigwigs now have to sample more than 30 dishes. Oh, really? The bosses are after a fresher, funkier take on the traditional Queen's Grill menu. So, what's the verdict? You are going back into sophistication of fine dining. You have to go back more into the casual, easy to do, and something not... Easy to do is the key. Easy to but do. But with the Queen's Grill touch, simplify. We moved from the stiffness of fine dining to the more uh, relaxing, actually, elegant, casual dining to please a, a wider range of our customers. So for opening night, chefs need to drop old-fashioned formality and serve up less fussy food. This is nice. But an unusual haggis and haddock-themed starter... Who would think, huh? Haggis and haddock. ...is ticking everyone's boxes. You know I hate haggis. I would order this. There is no place in the UAE that is serving anything close to this. This is, would be a signature for us. Uh. Sexy, sexy, sexy. That's flavour personified, really. It's always nerve-wracking. It's always stressful. It's uh, going to be a challenge. Dubai has over 105 star hotels. 
But for designer Chris, none can match the vintage glamour aboard the ship. Dubai is a brand new car. Beautiful. But everybody appreciates with it when you switch on the engine of an old uh, Rolls Royce. That element, that is what I like to reflect. Today, as usual, beds are being changed, ready to check in new guests to the 224 rooms currently open. But for the hotel to stay at the top of the Dubai market, it also needs to offer exclusive five-star suites for high-end guests. After a complete makeover, the two refurbed royal suites are almost ready to go. Uh, quite a bit to do still. But as he goes for a final inspection with project manager Nina, the decor's not floating Chris's boat. We really gave the yacht feeling to the rooms, and there were a few things that was not right. The joinery will go back for repainting because oh, the type yes. of uh, paint uh, is not um, yeah, they what we. Yeah, they didn't really coat it. Yeah, it scratches very easily. Little quirky elements that I, it, it wasn't working for me. The colour moque, if it's fully, sort of, completely gloss, like this one here. Guests will pay top dollar for these rooms. Getting them right is vital if the hotel is to be competitive. But look, look, the scratch is here. But there's a problem with the sweet centrepiece, a custom-made bar. This one here, we need to make sure that, see, it's hitting the, the step. It's got a kind of an old-fashioned design to it. You really want to feel that it's almost been there forever. The way it's coming together, I'm not too pleased. Chris is so unhappy, he's sending some furniture back to the manufacturer for alterations. But with the clock ticking on the makeover, will his gamble pay off? Sometimes you have to take that call. But nevertheless, you never know. It might go wrong and there's another delay and, and hopefully we'll fingers crossed. The Royal Suites and Restaurants aren't the only thing on board getting a makeover. So are some of its staff. Hi, Bilal. How are you? Good. I believe my new uniform's here. Is that right? Yes. Head of Tours Peter is one of only two crew members who were on the ship when she was sailing. Now, that instantly feels great. It'll be like the full captain's uniform, you know. We are the oldest hotel in Dubai now. With that, comes along years of rich history. And indeed, that's what our passengers who come on now want to know about so much. When you have a uniform like this, it makes you feel different. It's lovely. Since the ship relaunched as a hotel, it's welcomed 600,000 guests on board. But below all the hustle and bustle are secret spaces that guests never get to see. This lift is one of the original lifts, mainly for back of house use. The ceiling's not very high, can't put so many chairs and tables inside, so <laughs> it makes the job a little bit more difficult. But uh, she's an old girl, and we make her work. Five of the lower decks are out of bounds to passengers, and behind closed doors, there are plenty of surprises. This area holds thousands of pieces of crockery, cutlery and utensils. We are currently now on deck seven of the ship, so where we are is actually underwater. It's one of the original refrigerated stores of the ship, um, but because of its size, it helps us nowadays with the storage of items. Exactly. Yes, this is the one that we were looking for. Look at that. 20% of the stock in here is original tableware that came with the ship. We came onto the ship and the amount of equipment was spectacular. We were walking around with our phone torches all over the place, scavenging, looking for everything. These are the original plates, so the Cunard logo, the single gold line, fine bone china, Wedgwood. Here yeah, you're working with real historic items uh, that are older than me, not saying that I'm historical, but uh, you know, it's just unique. It's the ship's uniqueness that attracts thousands of guests on board. We'd like to extend a very warm welcome to you to QE2 this afternoon. And in reception, head of tours Peter, now modelling his new uniform, is starting his first tour of the day. Without further ado, let's go and uh, start the ship, ship ahoy. Meanwhile, out on the quayside, there's an important delivery, the new furniture for the unfinished Royal Suites. We need to position it properly so it goes straight up to the signal deck suite, OK? The replacement bedhead is too big to be carried through the ship, so it needs to be craned to the top deck. The guys are waiting now to uh, get the hook coming down. A nerve-wracking manoeuvre for project manager Nina. 
It depends on the weather conditions. Up there, the wind is sometimes much different than to what we have here downstairs. So we would see. The crane is starting. The crane cannot maneuver in, in a centimeter range. As long as you don't bang it against the ship wall, there should be no issue. It's a little bit like these uh, crane games on the fun fair, where you have to place things or where you have to grab things, and uh, it needs to be kind of accurate. But it isn't today's only unusual sight on the ship. Up on quarter deck. Yeah, good. A fashion shoot's hit the runway. On you go. A British fashion brand have flown in from the UK to photograph their new cruiseware line on the ship. Lovely. It's absolutely beautiful because the light's gorgeous and you've got this real sort of sense of old world charm here. The styling is amazing for our clothes as well, so it's just this really lovely sense of nostalgia that it creates. And marketing director Katie wants to impress them, especially head of the fashion shoot, Lorraine. Lorraine used to she be my boss. She was my first official boss. I know how meticulous she likes everything, so I just want to make sure that she's happy. When your former boss comes back, you're always going to be a little bit, is it right? Is it perfect? Good morning. Good morning. But sailing through a fashion shoot in a busy hotel... Come through, come through. ..has its challenges. It's OK, no, no bother. So we're getting quite a few people walking through. Some of them are just walking through and then others are just sort of, you know, hanging back a bit. Thank you. And there's an even bigger challenge when the crew step off board. It's a bit crazy, a bit crane there. We are with the crane. <laughs> we can't have a crane in the bloody shop, can we? Nina's furniture hoisting is making life difficult for photographer Martin. The plan was to shoot exactly where the crane is. Fingers crossed, the crane moves fast. Get the crane out of there and get her shot. Automatic doors in front of us, sir. But there's now a tour group going out on deck. Tell them downstairs. They can prepare the crate, but wait until the tourists are gone. Which means, for safety reasons, furniture hoisting's got to stop. Obviously, nobody should ever walk underneath uh, any item being craned up. Right, go back a bit. With the light changing fast and a real risk of missing their best shot, the fashion crew come up with plan B. Just there, just there. It was a bit tricky, but we found a really good angle that'll work. OK, we're over here, guys. We're over here. I can't move the camera. Over here. Lovely. Good there. Hold there. Good there. Gorgeous there. That is amazing. OK, relax, guys. Keep yourselves covered. Sorted for now, but they must get essential sunset shots from the bow of the boat, which is still being painted. Do we have five minutes to get it off here? On board, Nina's still waiting for the final piece of furniture, the bar for the royal suites. We have only a certain time slots when we can get the mini bar up, so now we're a little bit restricted, which is uh, obviously <laughs> making it kind of exciting. <laughs> and I'm actually getting another call from Hotel operations. Hi, winner. Thank you so much. All right, we will create now everything up. Thank you so much. Bye bye. All right, that was the news. I can go ahead with the craning. The tour group's now well out of harm's way. All right, let's get those guys moving. <laughs> and the Royal Sweet Bar is en route. The crane is starting. Guys, come on! Get things moving! Anything can happen anytime, and I need to very quickly react to spontaneous things coming up. It's a challenging balancing act. We just need to always, obviously, uh, accommodate it and smile. <laughs> With the furniture in, Nina's now got an anxious wait for senior designer Chris's verdict. This is much better. This fits much more into the picture of this room. I mean, from the transport and everything, we need to look at like aligning all the hinges and everything properly. But it's really cool. Up on the top deck, the grill, opening in just a few days, is still being worked on. And designer-in-chief Chris is feeling the heat. This means a lot to a lot of people. This means a lot to Dubai as well. It's a mammoth job. And it's a mammoth job that may not finish in time. 
because the Queen's Grill Lounge, known as the Captain's Bar, still isn't ready. Curtains, lights, missing. So Chris and project manager Nina... We have a lot of uh, little shadows here. ...are checking on what needs to be done to hit their deadline. A lot of areas are either stained or cracked. They, they have tried to touch it up, okay. but you can see the touch-up. I like it to be aligned, actually. We have a site condition, which is a low ceiling, everything very close, so attention to detail is everything. There's already a lot to put right in a short space of time. The bar counter. We need to get your marble specialist here. And now Nina's found a major flaw. We have, unfortunately, a crack running through. But this crack obviously is a very visible one and it's a front of house, so... The 30-foot marble bar is the star attraction. <sighs> and the contractor, obviously, if they cannot repair it to our standards, they're going to need to replace it. Coming up... OMG. Things get sticky for Katie. Someone's head's going to roll. Probably my head's going to roll. But will they come completely on stock when the ship hosts a high-octane stunt? It's early afternoon aboard Hotel QE2. Check-in time. So your room is actually ready for you to check in now. And assistant manager Anthea's in charge. So far, we've had 38 people check in, and it is only 2.14. It's getting busy. How are you guys doing today? Checking in? Yes, we are. I have to go walk around. I have to go make sure everything is running smoothly, which is hard on the feet. <laughs> Good, enjoy. Yeah, he did win a prize for smiling. <laughs> No one smiling much in the Queen's Grill kitchen. The revamped restaurant's opening tonight. Can you give me one more, please? So it's D-Day for executive chef Dino's new menu. It's a massive push to be ready. It's all hands on deck. Everyone wants to do all they can to make tonight a success. Brush, 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 put it was. And director of food and beverage, Grant, <laughs> has hit on just the thing to give this evening high-class sing. It seems weak. Top-notch cocktails. Maybe something a little bit more kick behind it will work. Laced with royal connections. Could we maybe try the dry martini? We've actually selected that because of Princess Elizabeth, whose favourite drink this was. Yeah. This is a Queen's Cruise Liner, so we need to take that royal element as well. So we've made a martini. From what I understand and what I've heard, uh, the Queen has one every day. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's good. It's good. Fresh raspberry and fresh blackberry. OK, this is the Empress Kiss. Empress, Empress Kiss. Another classic of our original QE2. Important for us to get this right here. The USP of the QE2 is very simply heritage. The names that have visited the ship, I get goosebumps thinking about it. So the cocktails that we want to present, we've tried to focus a little bit on the new, on what we really want to be, but not forgetting what we were as well. Old classics have been blinged up with British blackberries sprayed with gold. Very nice, elegant. Or topped with liquid nitrogen. Edible bubble. This is okay. Dubai, after all. So we just pop it and, and that's it. Use your hand. Wow. Honestly, that, that was wow. This could be something very, very nice. My only concern, guys, getting that right and being able to serve that to them it makes me a little bit uh, nervous. Yes, but this is what I think we need to do. The cocktails for us are an idea of what we want to be perceived as. Does it make it challenging? Yes, it does. Does it make it easy? No, it doesn't. But does it make it rewarding? At the end of the night, I have no doubt it will be. Thanks for the work, huh? We'll speak soon. Thanks. Out on deck, marketing director Katie's cooked up a crazy caper to create an instant buzz about the hotel. She wants high-wire athletes to film their stunts on board in the hope that the video will go viral and bookings will increase. There's just one snag. If the safety team don't agree, it's game over. To keep her high-octane plan on track, Katie's got to convince head of safety Mike let me tell you what they want to do, first of all, tell before me. you start freaking out, or maybe freaking out more. They're going to slide down the funnel, they'll jump over and swing down a rope. La la! Easy. 
and then they will rig the bridge wing okay. and they will swing all around. How does that sound? Scary, very, very scary. But... Yeah? While Katie's grand plan to attract the under-30s hangs in the balance, CEO Hamza's dead set on saving the ship's past. We're now heading to the main control room. And even areas below deck, never seen by guests, are on his list to preserve. This was the heart of the ship. If the bridge was the brain, this was the heart. All the controls of the ship was from this area. The QE2 was designed in an era before software. It was actually designed by hand, men with calculators, with a lot of pens in their pockets, and a testament to who they were, she's in pretty good shape. From here, they would monitor all the nine engines that the ship had, and they would get commands from the bridge. This is the main propulsion lever. Full steam ahead, dead stop. Effectively, with these two tiny levers, you drove this mammoth of a vessel. The new hotel's electricity supply and aircon are monitored from here. But what is surprising is that the ship's massive engine room is still intact. So this is it, one of our nine engines. When these engines were fired up, they would roar. The ship's engines, each the size of a double-decker bus, generated 95 megawatts of power, enough to light up a city like Southampton. It was one of the fastest vessels ever to sail the seas. She sailed from Southampton to New York in four days. The QE2 represents what made British engineering famous. You know, when I come and see this, I think, how was she during her heyday? How many people worked down here to keep these engines running smoothly? But Hamza's decision to keep the engines in place is driven more by practicality than sentiment. We actually looked at removing all the engines and using this area for ballrooms. However, by removing these engines, you'd, you'd mess up the naval engineering of the ship because of the weight displacement. So we decided to preserve this area the way it is. And in the future, hopefully one day, once we've cleaned it, to allow people to come down here to reminisce how it was. Nine decks above the engine room, marketing director Katie's high-wire athletes have arrived. Three, two, one, action. She wants to bring the ship to a younger audience by filming stunts on board, in the hope that they'll go viral and drive up bookings. To do these quirky stunts, I think they get us a lot of attention online. Despite his concerns, safety officer Mike has greenlit filming. And head of tours Peter has bagged a starring role as captain. Oh my goodness, right? On my ship, I mean, really, what's going on? Incredible. I mean, loved it. Never before have I seen that on here, never. Fantastic. Fun it may be, but it's also risky. A zip wire is being rigged from the iconic red funnel for the day's trickiest stunt. The ship gives us a unique playground to, to, to work on. For her age, in pretty good shape. <laughs> This daredevil feat should deliver the high adrenaline impact that Katie is after. This is going to be great. Three, two, one, action. That wasn't part of the plan. I re-grabbed it, which is a silly idea, and then it just burned straight through the glove and through all levels of my skin to the flesh. As the last shots are captured without any more incidents, the crew get everything they need in the can. Fingers crossed it'll have the attention-grabbing impact Katie wants to pull in the younger crowd. But one 20-something on board today is already a QE2 fan. Now 23, Thomas and his family holidayed on the ship when he was little. He's even got home videos of himself on board as a child. As a family, we spent many lazy afternoons in the Mediterranean, uh, sitting down here. 
It's, it's sort of coming home, in a way, coming home to a second home, a second home we had each summer. There's one place on the ship that Thomas is keen to see again, the bridge. As a crew, we didn't come up here often at all. So okay. I mean, not, well, not unless we're getting a turning off or a meeting. Isn't it? And head of tours Peter has agreed to show him around. So here we are then, Thomas. Yeah. How yeah. long since you've been? So, 11 and a half years. Oh, my goodness me. So, Gracious. Gosh. So it's, it's very good to be back. Yeah. Favourite place on the ship. That's fantastic. So. This was the hub of the whole thing, the wheelhouse we are in now, of course, isn't it? You know. The tank. The tank, the nickname, yeah. So two bridge visits, 2005 and 2008. Gosh. Back then, I couldn't see over the, the helm at all. I was down here. Oh, yes, you yes. Um, and the first time, we were going 28 and a half knots through the Bay of Biscay. So you steered the ship? Well, it, it was locked, but there was mm. like, slight movement. Sort of. <laughs> this photo was taken actually in 2005. Oh, goodness me. At the wheel. Oh, gosh, um, right here. Okay. Priceless that you can't actually see over. I mean, but lovely, and you look so happy there. Yes. You know? It's, it's a real buzz mm. about being on the bridge of a ship. You know, as soon as you so stepped on, it didn't matter where you went. That was superfluous. It, yeah, you were in the ship. The ship was the destination. Thank you. Exactly. Huey Toon has inspired me to try and have a career at sea, hopefully be a quartermaster. Young Thomas isn't the only one who's been inspired by the ship. Another guest, Reuben, on board today with his children, has dramatic memories of her sailing days. Of course, being a teenager at school, it was a dream to go on a vessel such as this. And I remember the night we were sailing just out of the Bahamas, and as the vessel left the Bahamas, she had a complete power failure. Uh, a vessel the size of this, a complete power failure. There was just the, the emergency lighting. Everybody was in the casino, didn't know what to do. And I remember just staring out of the porthole, watching the waves going by in disbelief. And as a consequence of that, I, I, I wanted to know more as to why and, and why it happened. But because of my time on board, I uh, decided to become a marine engineer and naval architect, and uh, have been a marine surveyor ever since, doing inspections on vessels such as the QE2. Reuben now lives in Dubai and helped welcome the ship to her new home when she arrived here in 2008. My company was given the responsibility to tow the vessel around Dubai. So we took the QE2 from where she was in Port Rashid and we towed her to Dubai Dry Docks, you can just see in the distance, where she was repaired. We then towed her from here back to Dubai. So it's, she's always been a part of me, I suppose, from early days even till now. But for the ship to secure her future in the competitive Dubai hotel market, she needs to keep impressing. After the earlier drama of a crane in shot... Come in a wee bit now. That's it. Stay there. Katie's fashion shoot is back on track. It's great. OMG. But it's about to hit a last-minute problem out on deck. There's a photo shoot happening down here. Someone's head's going to roll. I always wanted to say that. <laughs> It's not really. It's probably my head's going to roll. Is it down there? It's the only chance to get sunset shots from the bow. We have a shoot on the bow. This is the way to get down to the bow. And it's got paint all over it. The bow downstairs is not wet. How long do you think we've got? It's what? 20, 20, 20 minutes. <gasps> with time running out. This is insane. Katie's come up with a cunning plan to exit via a door on the lower deck. You had to operate that, Katie. <laughs> Easier said than done. Bear with me. We're supposed to get out through this way, but it seems to be locked. So uh, Katie's had to go and find somebody to see if we can actually get out the door. But even with extra muscle, the fashion shoot still stuck. I can't get this bloody door opened. Mm. I couldn't have planned this better. <laughs> Thank you. With no time to lose... Oh, look at that! You oh. are strong! They're out on deck. Oh, you made it. That's, That's very dramatic. That's gorgeous. And the fashion shoot's back in business. It's brilliant, yeah. Good. That's it. 
Yeah. It's a hectic day done and dusted for Katie and the fashion crew. Coming up, temperatures are rising in the kitchen. Fine, fine. It will get this right. Eat your heart out, Sir Elton. But will the new restaurant hit the high notes when it counts? There's just hours to go before the reopening of the Queen's Grill. And with the cracked marble bar being put to rights and last-minute snagging finished in the dining room... I'm always excited. I'm always worried as well, but uh, fingers crossed. It's finally ready to go. Relaunching the ship's most famous restaurant is a big deal. The salmon needs to go in faster. As soon as it's called, get it in. Chef. So tonight, the stakes couldn't be higher. The Queen's Grill was always the restaurant that everybody wanted to go to, that you booked two years in advance to get a seat. It's a key part, if not the biggest key to success for, for the QE2. No, 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 it's not ready. It's not ready. In the kitchen, it's the final frantic prep. Chef, are we ready? Yeah. Huh? Are we ready? Guys, we have to get on the ball, huh? No, I'm not. Wait. Wait. When it's not successful, it's stressful and horrible. So tonight's a disaster. I'll just remove my apron and leave. Tempers are getting frayed behind the scenes. Really, 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 really. Need to finish now. Table five is confirmed or not confirmed? It's confirmed. No, it's not. If they don't come, they don't come. Okay. It's another cock okay. menu. Fine. Fine. What, what it will do? get it right. And success tonight depends on more than just the food. We just do a quick uniform check. Director of Food and Beverage, Grant, is checking everything's up to scratch out in the restaurant. Felix, Ty, ready to go, please. Look, at the end of the day, we've got a job to do. Ty, my team know that I will drive and I will push. Just the name badge missing, please. In order to make things work on the ship, we need to be forceful to get things done. Just one more thing, please, yeah? The big watch, get something more discreet. An eye for detail is always key in our industry. I mean, that's what sets your regular hotels apart from your really high-end hotels. And now that Grant has sorted out the last-minute touches, the restaurant is finally ready for guests. And Peter gets the chance for a sneak preview. My goodness. It's lovely to be back in the Queen's Grill. Somewhere, of course, I could never afford as a passenger to eat. Well, now, this does bring back memories. Gosh, this piano. This, I'm not sure if this is the one, but Elton John certainly did play a piano on board the QE2. And I'm going to have actually sit down. It's a Steinway, no less. And what can we say other than eat your heart out, Sir Elton? I wasn't sure, if you want the truth, when I was told a Queensville was being redone, I thought, oh, but I put my toys back in my pram and I thought, no. Wait, one word describes it. One word, outstanding. Oh, gone on the spot. Gone on the spot, darling. Up in the refurbished Royal Suites, it's also a dash to the finish line for project manager Nina. The fingerprints need to be off, and I think we are about to be there. With the new furniture in, the rooms are finally ready for VIP guests. And Chris is on his way for final sign-off. This is the moment of truth. They're not ready now. They're never going to be ready. Good morning. Oh, finally. Just... Brilliant. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, finally. Maybe, maybe coffee machine aligned straight, but uh, <laughs> that's me. Good. Very good. There's the ability for us to do lots of different things and really get the guest excited. You have to make sure that it's flawless. It was good, but now it's so much better. The bar setup is really, really good. I'm quite proud just to leave that mark. It feels like a, an old friend that I work with and I get to know her more and more. And as good friends, you grow the love for them. For me, it's, it's very personal. Well done, guys. Cheers. Well done. Thanks. Another major renovation job ticked off the list. And up on boat deck... Whatever they ask, we can give. The new Queen's Grill is in for a big evening. If I'm saying one minute, 15 seconds for a plating of a dish, 
every dish has to be one minute, 15 seconds. It cannot take more. I cannot wait 25 minutes for 40 plates to come out, because that is what's coming. After seven months, the hotel's flagship restaurant is ready to welcome guests again. It's now they're coming. They're here. They're here. But will the funky menu, swish cocktails, and expensive refurb hit the right note? Being on a ship has a sort of quite an intimate atmosphere. It's got a naturally intimate atmosphere. We feel that we are visiting a British monument while coming and having dinner here. The menu is typically British. <laughs> it took my breath away, actually, when I came in. I couldn't believe that it was the same space. We'll definitely be back for the cocktail. <laughs> Staff are very excited. They're buzzing, kitchen's buzzing, so good night. Good night. Tomorrow night, copy-paste. Let's, let's do it all again. Transforming the most famous ship in the world into a modern hotel was never going to be easy. But despite the challenges and setbacks, the QE2 team have managed to pull it off. And this little bit of Britain in Dubai remains afloat.